Today uh, we're gonna do some boat work again. This time not on my own boat, but we go again to Mark. From wildling uh, wildling uh, sailing. And we, uh, yeah, we're gonna see if, uh, if he needs some help with the deck. So stay tuned. I'm on my way to see Mark. We have agreed that I will help him to make a temporary deck on his boat. It's about a 45 minute drive to the place where Mark is staying with her friend. There we load all the necessary wood in his car and from there we go to his boat. But you can see all of this on Mark's channel. I post a link underneath this video. Here you can watch the tour of my boat. Have fun! Everyone. Welcome on my floating home she, and she's called New Hope. She's a Stroner Design Jaguar 36 catamaran. She is 11 meters long, six and a half meters wide. Uh, she was built in South Africa uh, and completed in 2006. And I will show you guys around. Let's start this tour on the foredeck of the boat. We have two spacious so-called tramplines where you can enjoy the sunset on some pillows while enjoying your drink. We also have a dolphin seat on each bow where you can sit and keep an eye on things. The boat is equipped with a rolling further with a jib on it, which is in good condition. Here we have an oversized anchor and a chain leading to the anchor locker. The boat has an electric windlass, 50 meters of chain stored in the anchor hatch, where also the gas cylinders are stored. In addition, we have a very large shell locker where we can store two asymmetrical spinnakers and an emergency jib. And also various other items such as a mobile 2 kilowatt generator, high pressure washer and additional jerry cans and other liquids and oils. Under here is a 270 liter water tank and a big 270 liter diesel tank. This pole, of which I have one on each side, might look like a spinnaker pole, but those are for securing the mast. With this, I also have two backstays. This allows the mast to partly tilt forward and allows the boat to pass under a bridge which is otherwise not possible. That seems a bit overkill to me, but it's nice to have when you may need it. If we then go up on the roof, you can see a running board through which you can easily open the lazy back and access the mainsail. The lazy back is currently empty because the mainsail is at the sail maker. You can also see the current solar panels here. But they will soon be replaced by larger ones. 
and you can also see the wind generator. But I will probably remove it. Then when we climb her down again, we walk down the spacious SL to the back. Which is wide enough to spaciously walk through. Where we then see a nice love seat, which again can be found on both sides of the boat. A little love seat. It's lovely to set. You can have, yeah, two persons, and you can take watch from here. See seals. Below here, you can see the life raft mounted, and next to it, you see the Starlink dish for my internet connection. On the port side here is also the cap for the emergency rudder. If we walk further back we will see the davits with the dinghy attached. The dinghy is a 10 foot rib with a 6 horsepower 4 stroke Mercury output motor. On the stern of the boat I have on each side a storage compartment. Next to the storage compartment, there is the shore power connection, which I recently replaced because it's almost melted down. Next to that is the filler cap for the port side 100 liter diesel tank and air tube for this tank. The boat has also a running board, which is a nice addition. And here we can see the port side sugar scoop and the swim ladder. Also we see here the port side filler cap for the port side extra 100 liter diesel fuel tank. And here we have the outside shower with fresh, hot and cold water. And there is also a deck wash pump connection, so we can spray off the boat and wash the boat. And at last we find here the exhaust for the diesel heating, which keeps me warm in winter. Then we start we start here in the inside, here in the cockpit, which is very spacious for a 36 feet catamaran, which is one of the plus side for me. There's a spacious dining table with plenty of seating. Next to there, there's a storage compartment where I store all the life jackets. I got some new one, but the boat also came with a few. And here's the manual bilge pump for the port side. And then on the other side, the starboard side, manual bilge pump. The steering position, or helm, is located on the port side. It's on a race platform. Because of the helm is raised, you have a good visibility around the boat, but you are still partly sheltered in case of bad weather. 
the throttle levers, one for each engine. We find here a dual speed manual winch, of course a compass and most of the lines come back to the helm. Also we have a Raymarine plotter and a wireless charger mount for my phone so I can use it as a secondary plotter with Navionics on it. Here we have a fish finder with depth meter, VHF speaker, all the necessary wind instruments, the autopilot and of course the motor instruments, one for each. And on the starboard side there is also a sitting position which is raised. Where all the mainsail lines come in, including tree reefs. Here is also the electric winch where I hoist the mainsail. As you can see the cockpit is quite spacious. I also got this mini scuba tank, which is handy in case of an emergency, or need to dive to see if the anchor is nicely settled. With these levers I can shut down each engine by cutting off its fuel supply. Below that I have a 12 volt socket which connects this fridge freezer cooler with two compartments that can be adjusted separately. This is mainly used to cool beer and soft drinks. And should I catch a large tuna, we can also freeze it in here. Below the steering position is the washing machine, which I recently installed. It was a chore to find a second hand one that fits in this size closet, as there are no longer new available. Both seats have the option to swivel the backrest, so you can sit on the other side. And the whole cockpit is surrounded by a full behemoth top, of which all the folds can unzip open, and if I want, I'm not in the rain or in the full sun. And now we go inside through this fully opening doors, which connect the cockpit and the saloon and gives the whole thing a very spacious feel. The salon has a large table surrounded by a sofa where you can easily eat with at least six people. There's also a large TV to PlayStation, YouTube and Netflix on. Opposite to this is the navigation cord. which includes the Navtex for weather information, all the wind instruments, including GPS, and next to it the autopilot. The VHF radio, and a radio for some nice music and a mobile VHF. And here I just installed a plotter radar monitor that mirrors the Raymarine in the steering position.
Below this is a large drawer with mostly various parts. I can transform this to a little desk so I can easily edit YouTube videos here. And under this is a cabinet with paper charts and all the manuals, papers and receipts from this boat. Ever. Also we can find here the EPUB. And you can see here the control panel for the diesel heater, a Wi-Fi access point and a little printer scanner. From here we move to the kitchen area, also called the galley. Here is a built-in garbage can, a semi-automatic coffee maker and a coffee grinder, because I like coffee. Next to it is a four burner stove. Below that is a new combination oven, microwave, air fryer, which I am very happy with. The galley also has more than enough storage space for all the dishes, the cutlery and all other belongings. Opposite to the galley we find a 12 volt fridge, and the 12 volt freezer. Above this is the AC and DC electrical panel where all the electrics are nicely tucked away. Here we can turn on and off the lights of the boat to be good visible by other boats. You can also see the Victron display here where I'm currently still working on the whole installation. More of this, the lithium batteries and the entire electrical system in a later video. So this boat also has Building mosquito net, mosquito screen, in front of the nice doors, and also blinds for each. So when you want to have some privacy, it's also nice to have. And then from here we go into the starboard hall. Here we have a co coat rack with behind a closet full of sailing clothes. And below that, the first aid box. If we then go to the left, into the owner's cabin, we can see a lot of closet space with where now mainly the cleaning supplies and bedding is. If we then walk a little further, you can see even more closet space and a bridge deck king size bed. With three more large closets next to it. This bed also is equipped with a nice TV. This cabin is equipped with plenty of windows that can be opened and two fans for good ventilation. We can also see the galley from here. The owner cabin is also equipped with its own electric toilet called a head. With its own shower and sink. I mainly use this for storage.
where we walk towards the stern. And there we find a cozy two-person bed. Again with plenty of windows and two fans for ventilation. And a lot of cabinets for extra storage. Under the bed is a starboard Volvo Penta 30 horsepower diesel. With here the fuel gauge for the starboard side 100 liter tank and a button to pump over the diesel from the main tank. Here we can see the Volvo diesel, a lot of space around it for maintenance and here a deck wash pump that comes out next to the outside shower. Also we find here the electric and cool water heater next to the 100 liter fuel tank. Here we see that there are a lot of pumps on this boat. This one is the deck wash, the bilge pump. From here we move to the porthole. Here we found a similar room than the starboard side, but with a few differences. There's a large cabinet that serves as a stool cabinet. Here are most of my tools stored and a lot of cables. Also you see the autopilot. The aft locker. Where one of the two air conditioners, one set, is equipped with a diesel heating unit. And we find here an emergency rudder, which can be connected from the deck through this hole directly to the steering system. And in the engine room, under the bed, next to the other Volvo Penta 30 horsepower engine, there is also a 12 volt water maker. It's supposed to be an automatic one, but I haven't tried it yet since I'm on fresh water at the moment. We have here an engine instrument panel for the inside, included all the alarms. When you're inside on your watch, something happens with one of the motors, you also hear it from the inside of the boat. If we then walk towards the bow of the boat, we see more closet space, where now mainly food and parts are stored.
If we walk on, we end up in the shower. Fortunately, I can just stand with my almost two meters of length. Here in the sink closet, we also find the switching for the fuel pumping from the main tank in front to the sub tanks near the engines. This is one of my recent projects. I made an automatic and manual switch for the bilge pump in the shower. And finally, the second electric head. With after the work my father did on it, works great again. This toilet, as the same on the starboard side, is connected to his own black water tank, which stores around 100 liters of black water. And last, some more storage. So this was the boat tour of New Hope. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like, subscribe, and if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And until the next one, thank you.